Drive it, test it, and crash it before you build it. Virtual simulation in manufacturing at Jaguar Land Rover on this edition of At the Intersection. Welcome to where cloud meets big data. I'm Ken Jennings, your host for this new series. Big data has now started to revolutionize every sector of the global economy. Like other essential factors of production, such as hard assets and human capital, much of modern economic activity simply couldn't take place without it. Big data creates value, allows experimentation, and enables new business models, products, and services. Analysts predict it will become a key basis of competition and growth for all companies in the future. This series will highlight some of the successes pioneering companies have had using big data. According to a J.D. Power & Associates study released in July, Jaguar ranks second industry-wide in vehicle appeal, and Land Rover tied for sixth among nameplates of 34 brands. And the Range Rover Evoque is ranked as the most appealing in the entry premium crossover SUV segment. So appealing that it also won Motor Trend's SUV of the Year in 2012. What is the secret of this phenomenal success? How did Jaguar Land Rover's Evoque achieve these and over 120 other awards since its release just over a year ago? A big factor is certainly big data. One of Evoke's great successes is that journey from concept to production without dilution. It was about putting design at the top of the agenda, but at the same time not to the detriment of the engineering. But it was a great belief that this design should not be constrained by the engineering, should not be constrained by the manufacturing. It had to work in harmony to create something that was truly desirable that people would want to buy. Jaguar Land Rover's highly successful Evoque, a winner of over 120 awards since it was introduced in 2011, epitomizes how virtual simulation is changing the automotive industry by helping integrate design and engineering. Given Land Rover's design director Jerry McGovern's unique design, the Range Rover Evoque represented a lot of challenges for the design and engineering teams. The dramatic roofline required innovative redesign of the structure and components under the back seat and the weight and mileage requirements pushed aerodynamic and material design to new levels for the engineering teams. The actual product development process is incredibly complex. A lot of very talented designers and engineers are very capable that have to come together to make these things happen and technology is being used in order to make that process more efficient, quicker where it's appropriate, Traditional automotive manufacturing begins by carving clay models from the designer's drawings. Introduced in the 60s, computer-aided design and computer-aided engineering allowed manufacturers to cut time to market and reduce costs. Today at Jaguar Land Rover, virtual simulations generate huge amounts of data, often greater than 10 terabytes per day. Using high-performance computers to manage this huge amount of data, design and engineering teams create virtual simulations of spatial, three-dimensional images, giving teams increased perception as they experiment with design and technology variations while reducing wasteful physical prototyping. These tools helped give the teams the insight to solve these design engineering problems. We employed the full suite of analysis onto the Evoke so that we could very much again mature the design through many, many iterations of that vehicle virtually so that by the time we got to create a physical prototype we were very confident that the car would perform how we were expecting it to perform. Virtual simulation allowed the teams to look at the problems in much more detail, easily test new ideas and make changes faster than ever before. More advanced computers means that process is now much reduced, therefore we can just keep throwing detail at the models. And the more detail we get, the more accuracy we get. And also the more areas to explore we get as well. We had nine, 11 designs, something like that. And what our designers were allowed to do is come down here and they could cherry pick from each design. So in the end, we could turn something around in a matter of days and they could see that design. The virtual simulation has changed the way engineers look at everything these days, from fluid dynamics to assembly planning. It's all, it's all on screens, multiple screens. What you typically see is engineers clustered around a screen. 
and it's become a very much a visual science. So when we're talking NVH or crash, people are looking at structures collapsing, they're looking at things shaking. They can see the performance, and that's a language that's much more readily understood by others. To manage the demands of virtual simulation, the Jaguar Land Rover IT team designed and built a high-performance computing ecosystem of HPC clusters, scale-out NAS, file server engineering workstations, and networking to form a capable factory environment. We're generating tens of terabytes of data. We're running a parallel file system of hundreds and hundreds of terabytes of data that is not, not only in place today, but gives us the scale-out capability of the future, both from an, an I.O. perspective, but also from a pure storage perspective. And it's been the managing and using that data that's helped make the Range Rover Evoke a reality. The key to data is unlocking it. It's about putting tools into the hands of both power users and the general business, and around opening this up so that we can have a have our actual platform that enables us to make use of all this unlocked potential. The vehicle is a tribute to the designers and the engineers that actually made it happen. The car, most importantly, is selling very well and it's helping to transform our business. In a way, it's just changed attitudinally the way we approach product development. Joining me now, we have two industry experts, David Tui and Tom Roloff, here to talk with us about big data. Thanks for joining us, guys. Thank you. Thank you. So it's really clear from that video that these guys made a huge change to how their company works. You know, to stay competitive, that was a big investment in big data, right? I mean, that's a gutsy move. How does that transformation take place in a company? No doubt. I think it's uh, you know, really interesting to see that they, they stepped back from the process that they had originally, right? This is the way we used to design a car. For a long time, right? That's this right. is a company we've, with like we've a done it many century times, of history right? or something. We're, we're a medium-sized uh, automotive company. We're competing with the big guys. We've got to come up with some advantage. The advantage they decided to come up with was we're going to integrate design, manufacturing, and engineering in a whole different way. We're going to create a collaborative environment. And when we do that, we're going to be able to shrink the cycle time of the development process. We're going to iterate faster. We're going to have more options and more opportunities to answer and ask the same question and get better and better answers and build a better product at the end of that, right? And it's really interesting to see, you know, the, how the technology was key to unleashing exactly. that value. The exactly. technology transformation enabled them to get this great vision they wanted to have which happen. Is, which is, I think, the exciting part, right, for, for uh, the idea that it's the technology architecture that's enabling a new business process that's creating a better product. And it's the power of ID, you know, the, you know, this idea of industrial design has become such an important part of how people experience technology now, you know, it's just amazing, our, our phones are organic, you know, and so the idea of being able to get in there and, and, and feel the car virtually in a cost-effective way, iterate, change something structurally in the car and get, immerse yourself again in that car, uh, it's just got to be, you know, a uh, completely freeing experience for the design side of the house because, yeah. yeah. you know, the engineers on this car had to do some significant work just to make the back seats work. We're both tall guys. You know, I'm 6'1", <laughs> six, he's 6'3". Six, we got to fit in the back seat of a car that's got that sloping roof. Significant amount of energy being yeah. spent, right? I, I would have loved the idea, right, of you and I going in there to seeing a model, rotating it around and being like, look in there, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Right? That's the part you got to go help me engineer differently or manufacture differently or design differently, right? I mean, yeah. th those are those would be fantastic things to go be able to. And you know it's cool because it's a cave. It's the virtual yeah. reality yeah. cave. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, not yeah. a room, it's yeah. a cave, like Batman has a cave. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I just love that clip where they're just standing there and you know they're seeing yeah. the bottom of the steering wheel like they're little tiny yeah. people in this virtual car. It just shows you the amount of knowledge, uh, the amount of data about that car. Yeah. You know, I, we'll, we'll, we'll go, uh, put in the same sentence here, Steve Jobs and, uh, and Jeremy McGovern, right? I think the vision, right, to say, it's gotta be designed like this, right? I mean, Steve mm -hmm. Jobs taught us that right. about the experience we have with a phone. And I think, you know, he, it, it, that's the central piece there, right? The, the edict came to engineering and manufacturing. This is the way it's gotta be. This mm -hmm. is the experience we're trying to create. I hear those same kind of things coming from, from Jerry and, and the Evoke, and I, and I hear us kind of saying, we can't really compromise the uh, design with the manufacturing. And we also can't, you can't, 
compromising engineering, right? It's obviously got to be a high performance car. So and, and maybe without those simulation tools, you know, instead that beautiful design just suffers a death by a thousand cuts yeah. where some engineer has to go to the guy and be like, I know the roof line was pretty, but you know, that was on paper. The car is actually going right. to look like this and you got some ugly. That angle seat. can't yeah. work, right? But, yeah. So yeah. yeah. But you instead you got this. you're in the production line, right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now you've got these iterative cycles that are just so much yeah. shorter and so much more agile that you get that beautiful design, you know, rolling off the line just like it did in the computer. Yeah, yeah and the thing that I think was really stunning on this one is, you know, the, the amount of data, this, we talk about this thing called big data, you know, it's just unstructured data, it's a huge velocity of data, it's got a huge variety. Harnessing that and turning that into a simulation and, 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 and delivery is one thing, but also the idea of running engineering studies against it so they could like do the computational fluid dynamics, which is super geeky, but it's basically running air over the car to you make could, sure you, you don't have- You saw the little dots yeah, going over the roof. No really yeah, weird yeah, vibrations. Yeah. So not only do they capture the whole car virtually, but they can actually you know, crash the car and simulate airflow over the car virtually, you know, and it takes a ton of big data compute horsepower and storage horsepower to be able to manage that. It occurs to me that as data proliferates, you know, obviously you've got more data, but the connections between the data yeah. uh, proliferate exponentially. Yeah. So you've got, you know, if you can, you know, make new connections between different kinds of data, the variety you were talking yeah. about, you've got amazing opportunities that, that you didn't have. Five and cars like the Evoque themselves generate their own data, right? right. So they, have, they generate sensor information about loads on the cars, right, that they can actually mine that data. So in the industry, we talk about this thing called data exhaust. It's machine-generated data, not even human-generated data. And it's actually an order of magnitude more than human-generated data. I'm picturing it trailing behind the car, you know, yeah, one, yeah. ones and zeros coming out of some yeah. port in the back of the car. Yeah, I mean, they, the car companies are saying, I'm going to put 10,000 sensors in a car. Yeah. Right, 10,000 sensors that are sensing all the time. How do you take that information exhaust and, and do some analytics on it, right? I assume it's not just automotive. I mean, the kind of uh, potential we've seen here in the, the Evoke development model, I assume there's other kinds of manufacturing processes that could benefit the same way, right? Yeah, absolutely. I'll give you an example of uh, a green energy example. So there's a company called Vestas, very innovative company, building wind turbines, large mm -hmm. you know, power jetting wind turbines, green energy. and. Um, they went out and upgraded their weather sort of forecasting technology, and so they, they could get a better view of where the winds would be prevalent on various you know, parts of geog uh, geography. Uh, because the idea is when you're buying one of these wind turbines, you want it to be windy. And so by having- I can see how that yeah. would be a plus. <laughs> and that's how you feel to help your investors who buy it get their return on their investment. And so they actually increased their uh, technology by 10x performance to be able to get more accurate simulations of where the winds are going to uh, blow and therefore help uh, you know, reduce the risk for their investors who are buying the technology. It's an amazing example of both green, green technology you know, wind turbines and high performance computing to generate a business result working mm -hmm. together. You're right, that's, that's how the product's actually used yeah. by the, yeah. by the I client. think that's you know, an emerging trend, right? That, that it's IT and big data architectures and high performance computing architectures that are affecting revenue streams. They're not just affecting the cost structure of the IT department, they're affecting the company's revenue stream, right? Where I place that wind turbine is gonna be important. Uh, other examples, right, in, uh, in the pharmaceutical industry. Huge big data problems about gene sequencing. We know all kinds of things about genes today. Pharmaceutical companies are saying, given that we know all these things about gene sequencing, what compounds have I developed historically that might create new therapies for new diseases, given what I know and know about genes, right? So I've, I've got massive data files about gene sequences. I've got historical data around compounds that I have. How do I bring those things together? How do I get new insights into perhaps a new uh, therapy or a new drug or you know, some new revenue stream that I'm creating? Yeah, it's amazing. And just to give you some, some feel for this, IDC has projected this study called the Digital Universe. And it's an often quoted study, but it talks about the idea that we're going to go from 800 exabytes, which is a 10 with 18 zeros, that's a pretty big number. 18 zeros. After it, right? Wow. To 35 zettabytes worth of raw data in the world by 2020. And that's a 50x increase, you know, of data. And it's all, it's, that's the definition of big data. A zettabyte is a 10 with 21 zeros after it, right? It's, uh, you know, it's just, you can't even get it all on one page, you know? And that's, that's the big data problem that we're going to be facing here. So really, it's about, how are you going to solve that? And I think uh, you know the benefits have been pretty clearly articulated from the McKinsey study, right? Yeah, that's right. You know, that's so right. it's really about the opportunity to make that happen, and IT is going to be the and, guy. And just to review, the McKinsey study says that it's you can incredible savings in. Uh, yeah, go ahead. What's, what's, what were the numbers? It's like 50% reduction. I think in the manufacturing industry, they came up with a, yeah. with a use case, right? It said 50% reduction in the cost of manufacturing a new product and something like a 7% saving in the capex associated with the environment that you're using to build that product. Thinking about a, a business process and shrinking the cycle time of that business process and getting to market earlier, how much money is that worth? How do you save that? And it's really about agility, right? In the end, these guys want to be more nimble. Time is money, right? right? And this technology study just reinforces that.
David, Tom, thanks for being here with us today. I hope to see you back here soon. Yeah, thank you. It was great. Looking forward to it, guys.